When I first started experimenting with DIY soldering 16 or 17 years ago, I was looking for cheap ways to expand my acoustic drum set into the electronic world. I couldn't afford Roland V drums, which were the exciting new thing at the time, or even the cheaper rubberized electronic pads. I heard from a friend about using piezo transducers as drum triggers, so I bought a bunch of them at Radio Shack, as well as an old electronic drum module on eBay. I learned to solder by attaching the leads of the piezos to quarter-inch cables to plug them into the drum brain. A piezo includes two conductive metal discs with a crystal material sealed in between them. When that crystal is excited, a burst of electricity is generated, resulting in voltage passed out of the element. Colin Cunningham has a great video demonstrating a homemade version of this with crystals he grew himself. And we see piezos in all kinds of devices, like the microphony module from Music Thing, or Future Man from Bela Fleck and the Flecktones Drumatar. Chris Randall recently experimented with a piezo and metal hardware in episode one of his Sound Experiment series on the Analog Industries YouTube channel. Not only can these cool components act as sensitive mics, but the voltage spikes that they generate can be used as triggers for drum sounds and modules. And if you're concerned about the voltage being too much for your system, you can connect a piezo directly to a multimeter or oscilloscope to measure the voltage output. Anyone who has taken drum lessons probably recognizes these remote practice pads. Taking the pad apart, it's not a complicated thing. Just a rim, a head, and a piece of foam. If we slice that piece of foam in half, we can slide a piezo into the center. This works much better if we spread out the surface area of the contact element, so taping or gluing the piezo to the center of a coffee can lid or something of that nature can greatly increase the sensitivity of the pad. On the bottom of the pad, I drilled a hole and fit an RCA cable connector through it. I used an RCA connector because the contacts that rest inside the pad are minimal compared to an 8th inch jack. However, I've marked on the head where the connector is, so I don't hit that part of the head with my sticks, potentially damaging the connector. Now I can seal up the pad and connect it to the modular system. I'll connect it to the trigger input of a noise engineering Basimilus Iteritis and play some notes. It's firing well and getting some results from the pad. We could also plug this to the input of an envelope to trigger some other event, or use it as a pulse source for sample and hold or some other function. Of course, there are probably many ways to improve upon the design, but I wanted to get in on the piezo fun and demonstrate that these things are pretty robust. This pad is 16 years old, and it's something immediately usable in your system. What are you using to trigger events in your system? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and sharing. As always, please like, follow, and subscribe. And remember, patch smarter.